With this video, we are officially starting our journey through the ranks in Portable 3rd. If you have not yet done so, go watch some of the videos on my Portable 3rd introduction and basics, at least the first three, and a weapon of your choosing. The playlist is linked in the cards of this video. If you can't pick a weapon, I'd recommend Sword and Shield, Switch Axe, or Longsword. For ranged options, I'd recommend Light Bow Gun, though some may say Bow and that's a fine option too. I'd highly recommend you take some time to practice with your weapon a little. Do any quest you like, I'll be covering the important ones eventually, but especially hunt Great Jaggy. Do it enough times to make his full armor set for either Blademaster or Gunner. I won't go into that much here, but keep in mind that some versions of armor are only usable by Blademasters, and some are only usable by Gunners. Just pay a little attention and you'll be fine. I'd also recommend you create and equip three Attack Drill 1s to your armor. Doing so will upgrade your Attack Up Small Armor Skill, or AUS, to Attack Up Medium, or AUM. This will require, in total, three Aqua Glow Jewels, six Jaggy Scales, and three Might Seeds. Aqua Glow can be found from Mining Nodes, and the Mining Seeds can be bought from the Traveling Peddler and planted in your farm. You should stockpile these eventually, but I won't be going into it much right now. Once they are crafted and attached, saving your equipment as an equipment set will also save whatever decorations are attached. This is an extremely useful feature. Might seeds are sold for 280 zenny. I recommend you buy one and plant it in your farm to get more. Back to the Great Jaggy armor set. In total, you'll need 2 King's Frill, 8 Great Jaggy Hide, 5 Great Jaggy Claw, which can all be obtained from the Great Jaggy itself. The frill in particular may require you to break his head and or capture him, and it may take some attempts before you even see one. You'll also need 7 Jaggy Scales, 10 Jaggy Hide, which can be obtained from smaller Jaggy and Jaggia, as well as 4 Monster Bone S, which can be obtained from a variety of small monsters such as Jaggy, and finally, 6 Iron Ore, 3 Earth Crystals, and 2 Macalite Ore, which can all be obtained from various mining points. It may sound like a lot, and it's not a little, but keep hunting Great Jaggy and do a bit of mining and you'll get enough in no time, as well as get just that bit better at the game. Make sure to make use of the farm in between hunts as well. Once you've crafted the whole Great Jaggy set and whatever weapon I recommended you make in your respective starter video, you should be prepared enough to move on. The next key quest we'll be tackling will be Forest Murmur, to hunt a bull drum. We've already fought Belfangles before. The bull drum is basically just a larger version of them. However, before we do that, we should do some quests to upgrade our drinks and hot spring. You should do this whenever it's available, if you're able to. Some of them can be tough later on. After defeating Great Jaggy and Arjuros, there are two quests to complete. One is Through the Poison Mist, and the other is Hot Spring Reinforcements. Through the Poison Mist is unlocked after defeating Great Jaggy, while Hot Spring Reinforcements is unlocked by clearing the village quest Blue Bear Arjuros. In Through the Poison Mist, you'll need to slay 15 Ragi, which are basically poison-themed Jaggy. You shouldn't have any serious trouble with this, just take your time and bring 10 potions and whetstones. In Hot Spring Reinforcements, you'll need to kill a Great Jaggy. You only ever need to clear this quest one time, but the upgrade is permanent. Once you are done with this quest, you should now have unlocked Bokobo Cola, which can increase your attack, and the Hot Spring should now increase your maximum health by 20 instead of 10. Now we can go and fight Poldrum. Remember to bring some items to help you. For this hunt, I will be bringing 10 potions and 10 whetstones since I am using a melee weapon. Be sure to bring ammunition or coatings if you are a gunner. Like always, take useful items from the blue box. If this is your first time fighting Bull Drum, there will be a cutscene waiting for you in Area 7. Make your way there.
Doldrum really isn't too complicated, but there are some things you can look out for. The first charge a Boldrum does when it sees you will be a very short one. When you first engage with Boldrum, I highly recommend you get rid of the Bullfango if there are any in the area. Now that it's a one-on-one, -on -one, the fight becomes much more simple. This is an attack you need to be wary of. It comes out fast and can catch you off guard. As you can see there, it has a few parts where you can take damage if you get too close. There are two things you can do, either focus on its back or wait until it starts turning. If it's turning, it won't do the shake attack. Always assume when it's turning that it will charge at you when it's finished. It won't always drag its hoof on the ground. You don't really need a paintball roll drum, as it won't be leaving in a way that you can't easily follow. It's not a bad habit to get into, however. Remember to heal and sharpen if you need to. Now that he's exhausted, I want to use a trap, since exhausted monsters will be stuck in traps for longer. Yeah, this'll be good. Okay, well that is so rude. A special event happens when Boldrum dies. If you'd like to experience it first, pause the video and finish the hunt. And there we have it. Boldrum is a mere stepping stone on our journey as a hunter. A new monster has arrived in the area. Go and... Eh. Well, I'm sure this is nothing to be worried about. If you're not already, go to Area 5 and wait. quest also includes a Zenogre. Zenogre is the flagship of this game, and is quite difficult. You can obviously fight Zenogre here and now for the challenge, but I won't be doing so. Feel free to fight him, if only to get a feel for it, but we'll be taking care of him officially soon enough, and I'll be going into more detail about it later on. When fighting a new monster, focus on evasion first. Learn how to avoid his attacks, then you can figure out how to attack back. As the game tells us, selecting Go to Village Now from our menu will save our quest completion. Once you clear this quest, next up are the quests No Love for Ludroth, where you will slay 5 Ludroth, and Poisonous Ragi, where you will slay 10 Ragi. Both of these shouldn't cause much trouble to you. You're making good progress, so keep it up. Your journey is just starting. Until next time.